Good morning, everybody. Hallelujah. Remember, we're talking about releasing, releasing the righteous roar. Has anyone got a grrr building down there in your spirit this morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. Back to our foundation scriptures. Want to really move us on? There's a lot to share today, so we've got to keep this moving. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Remember, grace says it's yours. Faith says it's mine. It's mine. There's no place in our life, in our life of faith, this new life of faith that we've been called into, that we've been born again into, this new life of faith, there's no room in it, there's no place in it for passive acceptance of everything that comes along, everything that we recognise as being contrary to God's reve- revealed will for us in his word. There's no room any longer for just a passive ex- an attitude of passive acceptance towards these things. Our new life, our new life of faith is lived in active and aggressive expectancy and the expectation that we will see and that we will experience the goodness of God in the land of the living. And that's why it's so essential that, that, that we acknowledge and that we maintain God's created order as revealed in his word. We just read it there. His order is spirit, soul, and body. I know many times you'll hear people reverse these or jumble them up or, or talk about one or two of them. But no, God's order is spirit, soul, and and body. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 14. The strong spirit. Remember man is a is a spirit who has a soul and who lives in a body. Proverbs 18 14. The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble. But a weak and broken spirit who can raise up or bear. To sustain of course is defined as to strengthen or to support physically or mentally. A strong spirit will always result in a strong mind and in a strong body. But it begins there. It begins there with a strong spirit. First Corinthians six seventeen, the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. He, he, that's where our strength comes from. Our roar <laughs> is his roar. Our roar is her, his roar. Remember, we're talking about releasing the righteous Roar. A lion roars to communicate something. He's saying, I am here. This is my territory. Get out of here. Jesus told us to occupy until he comes. Hallelujah. Grace says it is yours. Faith says it is mine. Hallelujah. So I mean, I, I, I truly genuinely hope that you're convinced concerning this next statement. Because it's a statement I believe that's already deposited in your spirit. Your spirit that, that is always equipped to say amen. Your, your spirit never says no to God. Your spirit is always says amen to what God says in his word. So, so listen up here. Everything that we will ever need has already been provided. Everything that we will ever need has already been provided. Our Father in heaven ensured that we will always be fully protected and fully provided for. Grace says it is yours. Faith says (laughs) it is mine. It is mine. Faith believes with the heart and confesses with the mouth. Releases the righteous roar that is the expression of active and aggressive expectancy. Grace says it is yours. Faith says it is mine. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 1. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out and set up her seven pillars. So we've been looking, if you remember, at these seven pillars. The first pillar, we are no longer sinners trying to get righteous. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus with power and authority in Jesus' name to resist Sin, to resist the resistance, to oppose the opposition, we have been given a sin-proof heart. Grace says it is yours. (laughs) Faith says 
That is mine. Second pillar, we are no longer the sick trying to get healed. We are the healed with power and authority in Jesus' name to resist sickness, to resist the resistance, to oppose the opposition. We have been given a sickness-proof body. Grace says it is yours. <laughs> Faith says that is mine. Come on, we've got to get some kind of rhythm going here. Come on. Third pillar. We are no longer the oppressed trying to get delivered. We are the delivered with power and authority to resist oppression and depression and every other manifestation of, 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 of demonic assaults, assaults upon our soul. We have been given <laughs> an oppression-proof mind to resist the resistance and to oppose the opposition, grace says it is yours, faith says it is mine. Hallelujah. Proverbs 11, sorry, Psalm 11, verse 3. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? I said this last time, but there are many who are the righteousness of God. That's God's declaration over all of his children, all of his people, all of those who have been born again into his kingdom. They are the righteousness of God, but there are many who are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and yet they do not know what that truly means for them. And so they have been robbed, I believe, of the knowledge of so much of their inheritance, including freedom from shame and condemnation and, and fear and physical healing and freedom. You know, they, they don't know that they're, that they're already the healed, freedom from oppression and, and depression and, and from fear and stress and, and, and anxiety and all these negative emotions that Jesus already paid the price to set us free from. We were born again, free from these things. Hallelujah. So it's our role. It is our role. Those of us who are aware of these things, who have come into that revelation of these things, it's our role not to sit in some high hill somewhere and point fingers at everybody else. No, it's our role to contend for and proclaim and to disciple others in the seven pillars of wisdom, as we've refer been referring to them, that are foundational for the house of God. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 to 15. These things I write to you, Paul writing to Timothy, though I hope to come to you shortly, but if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground, the foundation, the mainstay of the truth. So, fourth pillar. Hallelujah. Let's move this on. We're looking at the fourth pillar today. We are not the poor <laughs> trying to prosper. We are the prosperous with power and authority in Jesus' name to resist poverty. Poverty is as much a manifestation of the curse. Go study it out for yourself. Poverty is a manifestation of the curse. But Jesus became a curse for us. Hallelujah. So that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. We are not the poor trying to prosper. We are the prosperous with power and authority in Jesus' name to resist poverty. Hallelujah. To resist the resistance, to oppose the opposition. See, the Word of God promises us that we can have recession-proof finances. Grace says it is yours. Faith says it is mine. I know that this is never the most popular subject <laughs> in church. But you know what? And I'll be honest with you, I haven't always relished the idea of speaking about it either, probably because of people's reactions. And to be honest, it took me a while to dig through all of the dirt to get to the foundation of this truth. Hallelujah. All of the the, the tradition that had, the, the, the stuff that tradition had built into me over probably generationally. No doubt generationally. But here we are, glory to God. And we're, and we're on the foundation. We're, we're laying this foundation. We are not the poor trying to prosper. We are the prosperous with power and authority in Jesus' name to resist poverty in all of its manifestations. Why can we do that? Because Jesus became a curse for us. So that the blessing of God, the blessing of Abraham might come. <laughs> Upon us, hallelujah. So we can we can 
resist poverty in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But I want you to, un- to catch some this morning. You, know? you see, this message, to be honest, is more relevant right now than it probably has ever been in most of our lifetimes. And as I was studying the word afresh uh, regarding this subject, my spirit was just getting more and more excited. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me say it again. The word of God promises us that we can have recession-proof finances. We need to understand there's a lot of stuff going on out there in the world right now. A lot of people are, are really... A lot of people have already lost their jobs. They've lost their incomes. And, and, and it's, it's, it's very uncertain times out there right now. But the Word of God promises us that we can have recession-proof finances. We need to get that message out there and invite people into His kingdom, into the kingdom of God, where they too can have recession-proof finances. Grace says it is yours. Faith says, hallelujah, it is Mine, it is mine. We have been given power to resist the resistance and to oppose the opposition. You know, it's been said that Jesus spoke more on the subject of money than any other subject. And to be honest, I have never done the research to verify that claim. But if that is true, then I guess that it's because his primary interest is in, is in people's hearts. And he said that where our treasure is, that is where our heart will be also. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 21. Do not lay up for yourselves. Jesus speaking, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Hallelujah. Let's just look at the foundation that, 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 that God laid for, for financial prosperity uh, and right back there at the very beginning. Genesis chapter 8, verses 22, to, um, and, then, and then I'll read just uh, chapter 9, verse 1. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not See, so you need to understand, God set in place seed time and harvest. And he said that that, will not, that principle will never cease. As long as the earth remains, that principle will never cease. And then it says in chapter 9 of Genesis and verse 1, So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. He didn't just say fill your own pockets. <laughs> He's basically saying, fill your pockets and let your pockets overflow. Fill the earth. Hallelujah. You know, it's all right to be greedy for the blessing, but it's not all right to be greedy with the blessing. (laughs) Luke chapter 12, verses 15 to 21. Then Jesus said, beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told him a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. And he said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all of my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you work for? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Let me explain that. You are rich toward God when you are generous toward those who are made in his image. Hallelujah. Amen. When you when your barns are full, you don't set out to build bigger barns. You allow your barn that's full to overflow. <laughs> Make no mistake, God wants to fill your barn. Hallelujah. Amen. God wants to fill your barn. But when your barn is full, he doesn't want you to tear down and build bigger ones. No, no, no. He wants you to, your barn to overflow. <laughs> Hallelujah. He wants you to be rich toward God by being generous towards those who are made 
in the image of God. Hallelujah. Jesus said it this way, freely you have received, freely, freely give. We need to understand that all giving began with God and still begins with God. He is the original giver. He is the ultimate giver. John 3.16, come on. God so loved the world that he gave, that he gave. God is love and love gives. The very nature of love is to give. James chapter 1 verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Hallelujah. Listen to Jesus on giving. Luke 6, verse 38. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your lap. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. The amount you give will determine the amount that you get back. And we know that in the, in the laws of seed time and harvest, you always reap more than you sow. God's way of increase is seed time and harvest. And the scripture says that he's the one who gives seed to the sower. Hallelujah. And bread to the eater. But you, the principle of seed time and harvest will always result in increase and in expansion. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. See, the truth is, folks, that all of us have nothing. That we, we have nothing that we have not received. Everything that we have is something that we received. And so our responsibility is to keep things flowing, to freely receive and to freely give. Jesus had this to say regarding our attitude towards money. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. He was very, very clear here. You cannot serve God and money. And then, before we could be gripped through that statement by a poverty mentality, he went on to say this, Matthew 6, verses 31 to 33, Therefore do not worry, <laughs> saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all of these things the Gentiles seek, those who do not know that they have a covenant with God, those who are outside of a covenant with God, those who are no, no, not yet in a relationship, with him, a covenant relationship with him. After all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need, your heavenly Father knows, the best Father, <laughs> the one who has promised to provide and protect, provide for and protect his children. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, because he knows that you need all these things, he's already provided all of these things. They will continue to provide all of these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things <laughs> shall be missing from your life. And all of these things shall be added. All of these things shall be added to you. Oh, hallelujah. Our Father in heaven is our source. And that's why we never have to worry. Because he's the best Father. He always provides. And he doesn't just provide. He always provides abundantly. For his children who trust in him alone. Hallelujah. We have been given <laughs> recession proof finances. Grace says it's yours. Faith says, oh yes, it is mine. It is mine. Acts chapter 20 verse 35. Paul speaking says, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said it is more blessed to give than to receive you see we, 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 we freely receive through the power of the blessing and then we get to experience the blessing of freely giving from what we freely receive I don't know if you've ever experienced this I hope you have there's, there's just there's such a blessing in being able to meet someone else's need it's just it's just uh Something happens. Something happens in us because it, 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 it corresponds with what happens in the heart of God when he pours out his blessing. And we get to experience something of that. Hallelujah. When we get from what we have freely received. Have you ever had a, 
don't know if, you, if you've been self-employed, you'll have done this, I'm sure. But man, have you ever had a look through your own or someone else's statement of accounts? You know, that there, there, there'll be a bunch of pages very often in there, you know, but really you kind of know that, that the most important information is what there on the last page, otherwise known <laughs> as the bottom line. But do you know? did you know that, that heaven actually has an accountancy department? <laughs> well, G- Jesus gave us a prophetic insight into heaven's bottom line. In Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then the king will say to those on his on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Remember these are statements going to call a balance sheet, isn't it? You know, it's all about your outgoings and your income and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in to your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of these, the least of these my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Oh, rich towards God. Hallelujah. Rich towards God. Generous towards those who are made in his image. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. If God's the ultimate giver, well, the devil is the ultimate taker. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, oh Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. Oh, hallelujah. What did, what did, what did God say to know? Fill the earth. Be a resource. Fill up and overflow. We need to catch this. Hallelujah. We're here to fill the air with heaven's provision. <laughs> Hallelujah. To be a resource. God is our source, but we're here to be a resource. To bring the, re- the resources of heaven. Hallelujah. Let them pass through us into a world that is lost and dying and hopeless and helpless. And it's getting, for a lot of people, it's, it's, getting, it's not getting any better right now. We need to be a resource to fill up and to overflow. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Then the Lord said to Abraham, Leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt, and all the families on earth will be blessed. (laughs) Through you, Jesus became a curse for us, so that the same blessing that was upon Abraham might come upon us, so that we... Through us, the, the, the nations of the earth, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Oh, hallelujah. That's always been God's plan. And it's still God's plan because that's God's heart. God's heart is to bless, is to give. Hallelujah. To overflow. Genesis 13 and, and, and verse, to overflow heaven into the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. God, God's heart is to overflow the abundance of heaven into the earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Genesis chapter 13, verse 2. Abraham was very rich in livestock and silver and in gold. That is the fruit 
of the blessing in Genesis 26, verses 12 to 13, Abraham's son Isaac says that he sowed in that land. He was in a land where he was, there was a famine, and he was tempted to go and to leave that land and to go somewhere else. And God instructed him, stay where you are, sow where you are in that land. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Isaac sowed in a time of famine. He sowed in a time of recession. You see, the wisdom of God and the blessing of God, they are not bound by recession. We have been given, let's hear it, we have been given recession-proof finances. Grace says it is yours. Faith says it is mine. We are here, folks. We, we, we've been given the power and the authority. We, we just need to stay in love and keep on giving because that is always the kingdom roadmap to prosperity. Stay in love and just keep on giving. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 39, verses 2 to 3. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian, and his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority, because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Joseph, Joseph never deviated from the vision that God had given him. And so he prospered, even as a servant and as a prisoner, even in a place of lockdown. <laughs> Hallelujah. Joseph prospered, and he, he was a blessing. He was always a resource of God's blessing, wherever he was and whoever he was amongst. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 8, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power, to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant with you, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. But let me ask a question. Does our expectation change because of a time of financial uncertainty in the world system? Or is our expectation to prosper based on the covenant that we have with Almighty God, that we are his children and he is our father? I mean... That's old covenant uh, speak, that's old covenant lingo and language, but new covenant language is he's her father <laughs> and we are his children. I mean, come on. <laughs> he's not just a father, he's the best father. <laughs> and fathers, a father's role and function is to, is to provide for his family, to protect his family, and we have the best father. Jesus used these Words over and over again. How much more will your Father in heaven? How much more? Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father has revealed himself in the, in, under the Old Covenant as the Lord who will provide. And the New Covenant, he's, he's revealed himself as our Father. Oh, oh, shikabusa. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 9. Therefore keep the words of this covenant and do them that you may prosper in all that you do. Remember the old is in the new Revealed. The new, uh, sorry, the, the old is in the new concealed. <laughs> the new is in the old revealed. The old is in the new. The, oh, am I getting it back to front again? Hallelujah. <laughs> the new is in the old uh, concealed. <laughs> and, and the old is in the new revealed. Hallelujah. <laughs> the new is in the old contained and the the old is in the new explained. Ah, well, hallelujah. Did we get there in the end? I'm not entirely sure, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Joshua chapter 1, verses 79. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions that Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything that you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. Remember? Information, meditation, hallelujah, revelation, transformation. Hallelujah. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you'll be sh sure to obey everything that is written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all that you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid 
or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. The word of God is the recession-proofing agent. It is the word of life. It is the word that is the seed of the abundant life that we were created to live and to enjoy. Oh, hallelujah. Why, why, why are we ever tempted to bring this, this word down to the level of our experience rather than the other way around? Hallelujah. Go so this word into your life. So this word into your life and it will always come up as prosperity and success. Oh, hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 11 to 12, and then verse 15. God said to Solomon, because your greatest desire is to help your people, O oh, Rabbi Shikabusa, and you did not ask for wealth and riches and fame or even the death of your enemies or a long life, but rather you asked for wisdom and knowledge to properly govern my people. I will certainly give you the wisdom and knowledge that you requested, oh hallelujah, but I will also give you wealth and riches and fame such as no other king has had before you or will ever have in the future. The king made silver and gold listen to that this is this is this is wild man the king made silver and gold as plentiful in jerusalem as stone Whoa. and valuable i guess that's a bit like what's in heaven <laughs> manifesting in the earth where the streets are made of gold hallelujah come on the king made silver and gold as plentiful in jerusalem as stone and valuable cedar timber was as common as the sycamore fig trees that grow in the foothills of Judah. See, that's what God said to him. That's what God did for Solomon, the richest man who ever lived. I mean, he easily puts Bill Gates and Warren Buffett in the shade. Come on, and anybody else of these new, uh, these new billionaires or whatever they call them. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 5. Uzziah sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding, in the visions of God, as long and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of the other stuff will be added to you. Hallelujah. Come on, there's no need to panic. There's never any need to get into a flap. Ne Nehemiah chapter 2 verses 17. Or just, we'll just read verse 20. So I answered them and said to them, The God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore we his servants will arise and build. See, when we make the decision to build, that's when the finances are released. When we make the decision that we are going to arise and build, then a lot of people say, well, if the finances would come in, then we could arise and build. No, 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 no. When we make the decision by faith, with active and aggressive expectancy, that we will arise and we are here, we recognize we are here to arise and to build. Then, then the finances <laughs> are released. Remember the word, the word of God is, 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 is a recession proofing agent. Psalm chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. Blessed is the man, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates. Hallelujah. Day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Grace says it's yours, faith says it is mine. Hallelujah. Psalm 112, verses 1 to 3. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man, blessed, blessed, blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Grace says it is yours, faith says, whoa, it is mine. Psalm 105, verse 37. He also brought them out with silver, and gold, and there was none feeble among his tribes. Grace says it is yours. <laughs> Faith says it is mine. It is mine. Psalm 118, verse 25. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray. Say now, prosperity. Grace says it is yours. Faith says, oh, it is mine. 
some verses here from Proverbs. Uh, um, honor the Lord with your uh, from uh, Proverbs chapter three verse nine. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all of your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. Oh, hallelujah! Grace says it is yours. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all of your increase. Hallelujah! <laughs> you overflow. Grace says it's yours. Faith says, oh yes. It is mine. Hallelujah. I tell you, whenever God blesses you, look for someone to bless. <laughs> verse, uh, Proverbs 8, verse 17. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. And then verse 21, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. Grace says, it is yours. Faith says, oh, it is mine. Hallelujah. Proverbs 10, verse 22. The blessing of the Lord makes a person rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. That's awesome. Grace says it is yours. Grace says <laughs> it is yours. Faith says it is mine. Hallelujah. Proverbs 11, verse 24. Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. I tell you, that's a good one to meditate. Proverbs 11, verse 24. Take that home with you. Meditate on that for a little while. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 23, verse 4. I will set up standards, shepherds, sorry, over them who will feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking, says the Lord. You know what? The message of recession-proof finances has been attacked even from within the church, but it must be preached and it must be practiced. The Lord is my shepherd. What's the very next statement? I will lack nothing. I will lack nothing. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. Grace says it is yours. Grace says it is yours. Come on. Faith says it is mine. It is mine. I will fill up and I will overflow. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 3 verses 10 to 12. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall... The vine failed to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. We could preach off of that, but we'll just leave that there right now. Hallelujah. Grace says, it is yours. Faith says, it is mine. It is mine, it is mine, it is mine. Matthew chapter 2, verse 11, they entered the house and saw the child with his mother. His mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold and frankincense and mercy. Our Father, we need to hear this, our Father in heaven ensured that his son would be abundantly provided for, even though he was born into a working class family rather than into a king's palace. Come on. Jesus began and ended his mission statement with an emphasis at the very outset of his ministry. He began and ended his mission statement with an emphasis on prosperity. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Hallelujah. Then he went on to uh, reveal to us what that gospel included. Amen. He, to preach deliverance to the captives. Recovery of sight to the blind, to restore vision to people who had lost their way in, in regards to God's heart and purpose for them, for all people who are made in his image. Hallelujah. To set at liberty the oppressed, the downtrodden. <laughs> to set them free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. First of all, to heal the broken heart to those who didn't know the, the broken heart is the result of a broken relationship. To restore that relationship between father and his children. <laughs> to 
preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty the oppressed. And then he said he came to proclaim the accepted and the acceptable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and the free favours of God profusely abound, as I like to put this, even to the point of extravagant excess. Grace says it is yours. <laughs> it's yours, come on, it's yours. Faith says it is mine. It is mine. Mark, chapter 10, verses 29 to 30. Yes, Jesus replied, and I assure you that everyone who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or property for my sake and for the good news will receive now in return a hundred times as many houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children and property along with persecution. And in the world to come, that person will have eternal life. Christ says it is yours. Faith says it is mine. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Remember the blessing of the Lord makes rich. Adds no sorrow with it. Has no sorrow attached to it. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Pressed down, shaken together to make room for more. Running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Grace says it is yours. Faith says it is Mine, Romans 10, 11 to 12, the scripture says, No man who believes in him, who adheres to, relies on, and trusts in him will ever be put to shame or be disappointed. No one, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same, is Lord, the same Lord is Lord over all, all of us. And he generously bestows his riches upon all who call upon him in faith. I believe that's from the Amplified Bible. Grace says it is yours. Faith says it is Mine, Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty he could make you rich. That's the place that happened at the cross, the place of great exchange. The exchange you know, who knows the exchange rate from heaven to earth never changes. Hallelujah. Amen. We have been given. Come on, recession proof. Finances. Grace says it is yours. Faith says it is mine. Second Corinthians chapter nine verses ten to eleven. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat, the seed for the sower and bread for the eater. In the same way, He will provide and increase your resources, and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Oh, hallelujah! Yes, you will be enriched in every way, so that you can always be generous. Grace says it is yours. Faith says it is mine. Galatians chapter 3, verses 9 and then 29. So then those who are people of faith are blessed and made happy and favoured by God as partners in fellowship with the believing and trusting Abraham. So all who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. Oh, hallelujah. You are his heirs and God's promise to Abraham belongs to to you. We have inherited the same blessing that Abraham knew and that Abraham experienced. Grace says, it is yours. Faith says, <laughs> it is mine. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. You see, that's why it's so important that we maintain God's order of spirit, soul and body, that we recognise that we are Join with the Lord and we have become one spirit with him because everything starts in the spirit. Hallelujah. It starts in heaven. Jesus said, pray this way, that my that the Father's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's already been provided for in heaven, purposed in heaven and provided for in heaven. Philippians 4.19 And my God will liberally supply, fill to the full, your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And it and and see, it begins in the, in heaven, but it, then it manifests in the earth. Grace says it is yours. Faith says <laughs> it is mine. Colossians chapter two verse eight: Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according 
to Christ. Let me just say this. Do not be scammed. Do not ever allow anyone to scam you. We have been given recession-proof finances. Grace says it is yours. Faith says it is mine. Really done. Hallelujah. Beloved, Third John, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. How does your soul prosper? Your soul prospers from your spirit. And your soul prospers, your mind and your will and your emotions are, are, retu- are finally tuned in with God's heart, God's purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. Your thoughts become, God's thoughts become your thoughts. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your will becomes completely surrendered, submitted to his will. Hallelujah. And your emotions are, 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 are restored. Hallelujah. Uh, the fruit of the emotions, the fruit of the Holy Spirit that affects your emotions are love and joy and peace. Oh, hallelujah. Come to that place of stability. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyway, that's another message. Glory to God. Grace says, it is yours. Faith says, it is mine. Luke 21, verses 1 to 4. While Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people dropping their gifts in the collection box. Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. I tell you the truth, Jesus said. This poor widow has given more than all of the rest of them, for they have given a tiny part of their surplus. But she, poor as she is, has given everything that she has. Remember, true wealth is not measured by how much you have, but by how much you give. We have been given recession. This this widow had a revelation. This old widow had a revelation that others didn't have that she had recession proof finances. Hallelujah. Grace says it is yours. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Faith says it is mine. Hallelujah. You know, there's so much more. So many other scriptures we could have gone to. I'm sure you're already thinking of some yourself. But there's so much more in the Word of God to substantiate this fourth pillar. But let's just finish. Uh, where we started because you know these are days of great uncertainty in the world system and we can either respond with passive acceptance or we can believe that these are days of great certainty for us and we can respond with active and aggressive expectancy because we have been given recession proof finances grace says it is yours faith says it is mine Luke chapter 12, verses 27 to 34. In fact, let me just say, I just thinking about it. I meditated on this just a wee while back, and I thought, you know, God, Jesus said that he came to seek and to save that which is lost. You know, the government thinks they've come up with this great track and trace system, but, you know, but God was the originator of the original track and trace. <laughs> to seek and to save that which is lost. But let me ask you this question, you know, <laughs> how infectious is your faith? How infectious is our faith? Let us ask ourselves this question as we just come to this last scripture. How infectious is our faith? If people who have been around us today or yesterday or or, or, or in our daily lives, if if they were to be tested, (laughs) would would they be tested positive? Would our faith have infected them with positivity, with hope? Come on. Not hope in, 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 in the world system, but hope in God. Let's, let's get out there, folks, and let's, let's infect people with our faith. So that when they're tested, every one of them will, be, will come up positive. Hallelujah. <laughs> you can take that away with you and meditate. Well, I haven't really got my head around it yet, but I'm, 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 it's not coming in its fullness yet. But there's a wee seed, a wee seed for you, a wee seed thought for you. We something to meditate on. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 12, verse 27 to 34. Look at the lilies and how they grow. Jesus speaking, they don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? And don't be concerned about what to eat and what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world. But your Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything that you need. So don't be afraid, little flock. <laughs> For it gives your Father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bring all of your life, including all of your possessions, into the kingdom where there will be recession proof. We have been given recession proof finances. Grace says, it is yours. Faith says, it is mine. Grace says, it is yours. Faith says, it is mine. Next time we'll come and we'll look at the fifth pillar. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your blessing. I thank you for the power of your blessing upon our lives. I thank you that you are not just a good father. You are the best father. That You have promised and you have proved yourself to be a father who provides and protect, provides for faithfully, endlessly, continuously, perpetually provides for and cares for and protects your children. Hallelujah. Help us to get that message out, Father. Help us to, to, to get around people and infect them with our faith so that they may be, every time they're tested, they may come up positive. Looking up to the, to the one who is faithful, in all of his ways, hallelujah, faithful to all of his promises to provide and to protect all who put their trust in him. Thank you, Father, that that's who you are. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Father. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Father. That we are not the poor trying to prosper, struggling to prosper, but we are the prosperous with power and authority in Jesus' name to re resist poverty in all of its manifestations to resist the resistance and to oppose the opposition in Jesus mighty name be glorified in your family and your church in Jesus name Amen